Hey YouTube people, taking a look again at the X13 ROG Flow. This is the 2022 edition, and uh, this, but these tweaks might work for the 2021, uh, could remain to be seen. But I have discovered a way to increase the boost clock of the GPU on this machine. And I've written a script to kind of help do all this. You don't have to use a script, but I'm going to walk you through it as I use the script and tell you how it works. But uh, basically, I'm going to show you as a teaser here what kind of performance gains you can get by uh, utilizing these tweaks or my script here. So uh, if we look at this red line, this is the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. And it is... Uh, on stock performance mode. And this is just a cross-reference of the frame rate uh, during the benchmark run. So you can see uh, that it is basically uh, averaging 93.84, but with my tweaks and uh, GPU adjustment applied, you can see you get much better frame rates across the board this is a boost of about 13 percent and that's just in this benchmark it could be a lot higher in other games might be lower in other games but uh, on average you're looking at a 13 to 15 percent uplift in performance uh, using this script so i want to show you how i did that but first uh, we're going to talk about two different things we're going to talk about the way that boosting works on the gpu with the rog flow Let's look at that first. Okay, so for better or worse, when you're using the Armory Crate service uh, and application on your ROG Flow, those who have one know it's very useful. I actually like the program. A lot of people hate it a lot. I think it's pretty good uh, to be able to change uh, settings really quickly. The silent mode is really good uh, to use low battery, and uh, it's not a bad application. What I'm talking about doing is not disabling completely Armory Crate all the time because I think it's useful in day-to-day. -day. You need it to set your MUX switch. So uh, I, I don't want to say don't use Armory Crate, but for the purposes of boosting the GPU, like say you're about to start a gaming session, uh, I would recommend using this tweak to disable your Armory Crate uh, get your performance up, and then when you're done playing the game and you're operating day-to-day -day and just browsing the web, go ahead and turn Armory Crate back on, and my script lets you do that easily, turn it on and off again. But let me tell you why disabling it is important. Uh, the reason that disabling Armory Crate is important is because the boost behavior of the GPU is affected by that service. And in the way that it works right now, um, the GPU only boosts when the CPU is at 15 watts or below. And uh, 15 watts is not very much. So not only is your CPU going very slow uh, at 15 watts in order to get 40 watts on the GPU, um, even if you're getting 40 watts on the GPU and you need more CPU, it's gonna go past 15 watts and then your GPU is gonna fall back down from 40 watts to 35. So the dynamic boost is almost never enabled. And in fact, we can look and see what that looks like because uh, let's go ahead and go back to our frames per second. If I change this over to the GPU power setting, you can see that during this benchmark run, look at this. How often do you see it get above 35 watts? A uh, little bit here and here. So basically for a tiny section of time in this benchmark did it actually get above 35 watts um, as the teaser here's what applying my tweak does to the number of watts that your gpu has access to look at this we're almost pegged at 40 watts so not only do you go from a situation where you're you only get to use 15 watts um, unless and your cpu won't boost or you're able to use 25 watts on your cpu and still use 40 watts on the GPU. And maybe I explained that slightly strange, but let me let me explain. So Armory Crate, to get 40 watts, you need to be below 15 watts of power. 
with Armory Crate disabled, you your CPU can use up to 25 watts of power before the GPU boost stops. So you're boosting all the way up to 25 watts rather than 15 watts. Uh, and that's weird because you're mixing GPU and CPU, but it will make a lot more sense uh, as we go through this. Okay, so uh, here's our baseline. This is stock. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply the changes on the computer and let you watch exactly how I do that. Okay, so just really quickly as we get started, I'm just going to show you how to install uh, my script. I'll provide the zip file and a link in the video. Uh, but if you look at it, it has this batch file and this NVOC. I can include the NVOC because uh, the terms that the author of this application says they don't care. I can distribute it however I want, so that's why it is in there like that. So all you're going to do is extract this into the x13cp folder. So um, like just for fun, I'm, I'll just go ahead and delete it. Um, but it, the name is important of this folder. So I guess step one is uh, create the folder. So you're going to go new folder, and you're going to go um, x13 capital C capital P. So you create that folder, and then you're going to drop this into here. Uh, they need to be in this folder because the batch script references specifically this folder. Uh, then what you want to do is download Ryzen ADJ. I don't include this in my release because there's, you know, it's it's open source, but it also, I don't think I can just distribute it myself, and it's easy to get. So you, so if you go to their main page, GitHub, Flygoat, Ryzen ADJ, there's a releases tab. Click here. You can download Ryzen ADG-Win64.zip. So you go ahead and download that. If you open it, what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, well, you're going to create a new folder in here, and you're going to call it Ryzen ADJ. Just like that. Uh, I don't know if capitalization is important, but do it like this. And then you've got your zip file. Copy all those files and paste them here. OK, now you're set up, just like I am. Uh, now that's super important that you get this right. Um, but that said, uh, now I can show you how that this software works and how you use it. Okay. So all I'm going to do here is start the control panel and I'm going to run it as administrator. You always want to run this as administrator. Okay, and I can see that my service is running. And what I'm going to do first off is disable Armory Crate. So I'll click one. And it says I recommend closing Armory Crate app now before continuing. I've already done that. It's not open. Also for the 22, 2022 X13, it is a good idea to set your MUX switch where you want it. I've done that. By disabling Armory Crate, you get better GPU performance. 40 watt GPU while the CPU is going up to 25 watt is possible. As compared to 40 watt GPU only available when the CPU is using less than 15 watts, that is the default configuration when Armory Crate is enabled. You still need to reboot the machine for the GPU to achieve that boost. I'll hit the button. And it has now disabled Armory Crate service. Armory Crate is disabled. Uh, remember to reboot. So I'll press the key to continue. We're back at the menu. And I will go ahead and reboot the machine. OK, and we're back. You want to be sure not to click the Armory Crate app. Don't open that up. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be in trouble. Let's go ahead and open up the control panel again. We'll run this as administrator. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to hit option four, which is going to set the CPU to 25, 25, 25. This is going to allow the GPU to boost to 40 watts when our recreate's disabled. Um, it's going to lock the CPU at 25. 25 watts is usually 
pretty good, uh, especially for the Ryzen 6000. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And what it does here is it kind of every 15 seconds resets the limits to 25 watts. You can just let that run in the background or whatever. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and rerun the benchmark and see how it looks differently now. But yeah, just leave this open. It's going to do its thing. It doesn't take any resources, hardly at all. Um, it's just setting Ryzen ADJ to these values. Uh, and just in case anything overrides it, it's going to continue to do that in the background. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the new benchmark with a, now a 40 watt GPU. Okay, so uh, we now have a green line, and the green line uh, is simply, now that we've applied this tweak, what difference did it make for us? And you can see that our frame rate boosted substantially, but we're not done yet because there's more tweaks we're going to apply on top of this. But I wanted to look at this really quickly so you can see uh, the GPU changes. Uh, so for example, here's the GPU power during the benchmark. You can see that it ran at almost 40 watts the entire time, which is awesome. That's, I mean, 35 is not nearly as good as 40 watts. Uh, so if we go and look at the um, CPU, GPU, sorry, GPU clocks as well, you can see much higher clocks uh, when we have applied this tweak. And that's without, that's without any overclock or undervolt uh, applied. So we're just getting better performance because our thermal constraint has been lifted. We have a higher ceiling. So that's always good to see. So, uh, but now there's more to do. Uh, there's still some more tweaks so we can get even more performance out of this using the script. So let's use the script again and I'll show you uh, what you can do uh, to get even more performance. Okay, so now that uh, we've got our 40 watt GPU option benchmark, I'm gonna now overclock the machine uh, using this script here. So uh, remember it, it says press the one key twice to return to the main menu. So I'll hit one twice and it goes back to the main menu. Now I'm gonna overclock uh, the CPU, sorry, the GPU. Uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use option eight because that's kind of like the more safe one that anyone can do. Mine hits nine okay, uh, but let's use eight just for fun. And it goes ahead and says, okay, your GPU's been overclocked uh, 200 megahertz and the RAM is overclocked 100 megahertz. Uh, that's actually 200 megahertz uh, just because of the way that this application works. So let's click it um, and we can get our GPU stats. So I'll hit A. Um, GPU statistics, you can see they're both overclocked by 200. So uh, now that that's set, I'm going to put it back in number four mode to make sure we stay at that 25 watts all the time. 25 watt maximum threshold, basically. That doesn't mean the CPU is using 25 watts all the time, it just will use up to 25. So we'll run that again, minimize, and I will uh, run the benchmark again, and you can see we'll look at all the results combined. Okay, so now you can see applying an additional overclock as well gets you even more performance. Uh, so we're, I mean, we're really seeing some dramatic uplifts here. Uh, I mean, the peak looks like it's at 150 versus, you know, the 130 here. But just in general, I mean, you're, you're obviously getting better performance. And let's look at more metrics than just the frames per second. Let's also look at uh, the way this might change temperature, the way it changes clocks. Uh, because, uh, I mean, it's your hardware, you can do what you want with it, but uh, maybe you don't like the way that the temperatures look after doing this. Um, I don't think it's too bad uh, at all, but I mean, your hardware, you know, <laughs> just, I'm just throwing that disclaimer out there. But uh, let's take a look at even more. Okay, so we still have our frames per second up here. We've got our GPU power. We can see that uh, over with our mod, we're at 40 watts when we're in that mode. Stock is at 35. Uh, you can see the GPU clock. So you can see we're really averaging uh, 15, almost 1455. Uh, sorry, 1577 average 
across the benchmark run where before it was at 1302 with these tweaks so obviously that's going to affect performance greatly um, so much better clock speeds uh, but then also take a look at the GPU temperature the GPU temperature in general uh, obviously increases with more watts but also with more clock speed so uh, you can see that when we were max overclocked with the best performance, uh, it, the temperature crept up much quicker than it was when it was uh, in the performance mode of stock. So red is stock, and it, the temps are quite low, uh, peaking at 66, where this is going to 70. 70 is not really too high, but you can see it's still creeping up. These temps are going to get hotter if we continue to run a game or a benchmark. Um, you can also see the GPU hotspot. This is uh, usually an indicator of how hot the RAM is. Um, also much hotter than it would be otherwise. But again, if you look at the actual difference between this, it's like, you know, averaging 73 versus, you know, bumping up into 78. So five degree difference. Not It's not huge. Um, and that, that uh, RAM... RAM and areas is usually spec to go up to like 105C, so we're not even close to the danger limit here at all. I mean, the whole the whole PC, you know, 40 watts on the GPU, 25 on the CPU, you're only using 65 watts. It's, it's probably okay, and I mean, that's my opinion, but, you know, those of you, you're up, you can make up your own mind on, on that type of thing. Um, let's look at one more thing. Um, Let's look at the CPU clocks because uh, that's one of the big benefits uh, to doing the tweak that I did, and that is being able to have the CPU uh, spike higher and more often. Uh, the red, you can see it kind of like plays, plays ball for a little bit, but then it flatlines down here at like 3.3 gigahertz for whatever reason and this is definitely it's probably something that the um, armory crate service is doing you can see it's very unnatural but this is the behavior occasionally it pops out and and spikes uh, when it sneaks out of the I don't, I don't know what's exactly what's happening here but the red line it, you can see it's artificially limiting that cpu clock speed i don't know if that's an attempt to try to let the gpu boost even though it's not so it's ineffective i don't know it's just not tuned great uh stock where if you do my tweak and give it you know up to 25 watts that it can play with the, suddenly your cpu cores are unrestricted they can you know use what they want and your core clocks on average are much higher for one with this this tweak uh, but it lets your gpu boost a lot more and use more power which equals performance so uh anyways there you have it um if you want the script it is in the description of this video um also, if the, you found this video helpful to get better performance uh, on your ROG Flow, uh, go ahead and use the super thanks and uh, send some money my way or just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, whatever you want to do. But thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful. Uh, thumbs up if it helped you out and we'll talk to you later.